Welcome back to the fourth part of the series. In this one, we're going to actually start developing the front end for our content feed application. So we've started developing the API for it, but we, we sort of want to display that visually somehow. And instead of doing that within the Django project like I did last time with the to-do list application, I'm going to split it out into a separate project. This front end is going to be written in React and they actually provide quite a nice little way of getting up and running quite quickly with a lot of technologies that just sort of work sort of in the background so you don't need to necessarily know that they're working but uh, it just sort of works out of the box which is quite nice. So I'm going to show you how to get set up and it's actually quite quick. At the moment as you can see we're in the content feed application still so this is where we're writing the code for the actual API itself. So I'm actually going to leave this running in the background so I'm going to do Django admin run server and this is going to be the API that hopefully eventually we're going to be able to connect to with our React application. So let's just check that works. So I'll refresh and you can see we've got this view here, just like we had last time. So in a new tab, I'm actually going to make this a little bit bigger so you can see it. I'm in my projects folder, not my projects uh, content feed specifically, because this is going to be a new repository. So I'm going to do, uh, well firstly, if you don't have it installed, you want to check that you've got Node. So if I do Node-V, you can see I'm on a, a very recent version of Node, so I'm on 8.5.0, but as long as you're on a fairly recent one, it should work fine. With that, we want to install a npm package. So it's going to be npm install-g create react app. Just like that. Now, I've actually got this installed, so it's probably going to fail for me. It just says I've updated it, so it, it gives you access to that command line utility which we can use to create a sort of template application uh, with, a, with a server that's sort of built in. So I'm going to do create react app and then I need to give it a name, so I'm going to call it content feed uh, fe for front end. And that might take a little bit of time to just create that. But that's basically going to give us the foundation for our web application front end. So that should have a server that we can use, as well as uh, things like live reload and all that sort of stuff, uh, as well as the sort of compiling from the latest ES6 syntax down to uh, whatever's compatible with the browser. So that should be all sort of built in with, with Babel and Webpack and all those technologies. But we, as I said, we don't need to worry about that too much. As you can see, now that that's finished, we've got some options here which gives us some sort of health information. But I just want to go ahead and go into that directory where it's just created for us. So content feed front end. And then all we can do is just start the server using npm start. Now that we've got that running then, as you can see it says go to localhost 3000. 3000 is the default port for a lot of front end projects. So I'm gonna to go to localhost uh, 3000. And so now you can see the sort of default React template that it gives you. But what I want to do is I'm going to open that in Atom and then pretty much rip out all that stuff so that we can start writing it from scratch. So I'm going to go back to the terminal and I'm, I'm going to leave this server running it as well. I'm going to open another tab just so that I can I can have that server, the, the two servers running as well as do whatever else I want. So here I'm again going to go into the same directory and what I want to do here is I'm just going to do Atom uh, open it in, in the current directory. So that's going to open another Atom window and as you can see I've got the sort of start a project here all set up for me. So the, the main one that we want to focus on is source. We can pretty much ignore the rest and what I want to do is I actually want to delete everything in this folder. So in my opinion the easiest way to do that is just go source and I'm going to do remove start. It says are you sure you want to remove everything? I'm going to say yes and if you go back to Atom, you can see we've got nothing in the source folder, which is good, it's exactly what we want. So I'm going to create a new file, I'm going to call it index.js, and I'm going to import React from React, just like that. So that's how it looks in, in JavaScript import statements. I'm also going to import React DOM. I'm not sure we'll need that yet, but we'll um, might as well import it because we're going to eventually. So I'm going to do uh, React DOM. So that's what the import looks like for that. 
And then I'm also going to do a little bit at the end. And so I'm going to define my com components in the middle here. And then at the end, I also need to make sure it's uh, sort of connected to the main HTML template, which I think it's given to you in source. So I've got an index.html. That's the actual main thing that gets sent to the browser. But as you can see about here, it's looking for uh, a div with an ID of root. So that's how the JavaScript sort of hooks into this HTML template. And this is the main one that the sort of browser is going to recognize first upon upon first loading your application. So going back to the JavaScript, I'm going to say uh, render. In other words, the main component for this application is, at least for now, we can always change it later, going to be called, uh, let's say, content feed. And I'm just going to use a bit of vanilla JavaScript just to link it through to the template itself. So using the root ID that we saw on that div element in the template, I'm going to say document dot get element get element by id and it's going to be called root and that should be enough to I'm just going to add a semicolon there just because it's a bit consistent and that should be enough to link it to the uh, template itself so now we actually need to define that component so for now I'm going to try to keep it quite simple and I'm just going to define a class called content feed and it's going to inherit from uh, the abstract class react dot component I like to think of a component as sort of little clusters of DOM elements which you can stick together and sort of rearrange however you'd like in in sort of different ways to be able to make your application in quite a reusable sort of fashion so at the moment I'm going to define a special method on this class and it's going to be called component did mount and this is pretty much saying uh, a bit like the view did load if you've ever done Swift or iOS development but this is going to be loaded whenever this component or this cluster of DOM elements is pretty much going to be rendered within the template. This is a good place for us to be able to make asynchronous API calls. So I'm going to say this dot get items, and get items is going to be the the method that gets called to be able to make that request to our API and retrieve hopefully the data contained within that sort of JSON response. So this this JSON response is hopefully what we should see. Uh, maybe we'll print it out in the console or or something like that. So I'm going to define get items, and yeah, I am going to use fetch. So fetch is really nice, uh, but it's not got the best browser support. If you're concerned about that, or you're using it in a, in a case where you do need to support older browsers, or even some of the newer browsers I think may not support it because it's quite a new feature, the, uh, there are some good polyfills on the internet, so just Google for that and you'll probably find some. They're quite useful. But for now I'm just going to go to uh, I'm going to put in the URL which I need to get this API for. So I'm just going to copy that and paste it there. And so that should be our URL. And this is an asynchronous request, so I, it means it's going to return a promise. And so I'm going to say dot then. And what I want to do is, uh, the first thing I want to do is convert it to JSON so that we, we can make sure it's in a format that we can work with. So I'm just going to say results, or in fact I suppose I should say items, no I'll go with results I think. So results is results.json. And then again I'm going to do another then, and here I'm going to say uh, results is using the arrow syntax here is going to be console dot log results. So hopefully we'll just see that printed out uh, in the console itself. Let's test that then. I'm going to go to the browser. I'm going to go to the React application. And oh, it says extend, not extends. That's plural. And so it's going to rebuild it. I've got another syntax error. Sorry, component did mount. It's also, it needs those parentheses on the end. Uh, if it goes blue, that, that sort of 
indicates the syntax is correct, so I should probably have used the syntax highlighting there to spot that error for me. But now we get another another error here. Now a React component, it requires you to define a render method because this is how we present things on the, on the actual website. Because we don't really care about that at the moment, we just want to see something in the console, well I'm going to open up the developer tools, but I'm also going to define that render method because it is required. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to return null just to present nothing on the screen, but make sure that it's satisfied that sort of requirement, which is mandatory in React. So now we get this error, failed to fetch. So I'm going to go to network and see, so it said failed. So the first thing is the URL is completely wrong, so sorry about that. And if we try this again, now as you can see, we have got an item here and we have got a response from the API itself and it is making a, a status 200, so it's, it's a good request, so that succeeded. The error that we're getting down here though is a little bit annoying, so I'm going to fix that in the next video.